Peter De Gais has been a familiar name in South African homes for decades and continues to show his theatrical powers in his latest offering, aptly named Sell by Date. Ace is equally recognized for his alter ego Evita Besedenhut, affectionately known as Danny Evita or the most famous white woman in South Africa. Mr. Peter Dirk Ace, rather, how, how have you been? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. I, I've been fine. Yes. Good. And what has been happening so far? We haven't seen you in a little bit. I have been recovering from a knee, I call it a knee transplant, yes. a new knee, which I thought was like cleaning your teeth, but it's not for sissies. <laughs> it was quite a performance. Um, and that means you've got to start learning how to do things without falling, mm -hmm. because I'm not 22 anymore, I'm about 77, you know, 77 going on 12. Yeah. Um, and I've been working on many things, but also uh, planning the visit to Johannesburg again, because I lived here for some years in the mm. old days, and I love the energy. Mm. And, uh, and it's a very interesting place and a bit frightening mm. when the traffic lights don't work and there's a homeless person doing all the traffic <laughs> hopping. Thank you very much, except for the taxi that nearly kills him. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a, it's a very exciting visit. So I'm glad to be here. And, you know, just speaking about Joburg and the differences, I'm sure you've picked up quite a few differences since the last time you've been here. Um, there's, and Joburg has been, you know, in the news quite a lot lately. So what are your thoughts about <laughs> Joburg currently? Well, Joburg is a, a big place mm -hmm. and with an extraordinary history and also having a really tough time having to switch off its lights and having taps but no water, uh, it, it, does, it doesn't help. Mm. It doesn't help the optimism for a democratic future. Mm. So I find people are very serious in Johannesburg and angry mm. um, and, and fed up. That's why I'm glad to be here with the show that also touches on all these issues, mm. but with humor. Mm. humor. Look, it's not, a, look, it, comedy is a joke mm. and you tell the joke, but what's going on in our politics and in our social lives is not funny. Mm. It's fearful. But you know, when you laugh at your fear, you make that fear less fearful. And I think that's the one thing that people enjoy when they come to my shows and they suddenly realize they, they, they listened to something they didn't want to think about. Um, and of course, with the load shed, that's also a very specific moment because in the middle of the show, you might lose your light and then you've got to keep going until the light comes back. Yeah. And that show that you're telling us about is Sell by Date, right? Sell by Date at the at Peter Turin's Monte Cassino Theatre, yes. And what inspired the name Sell by Date? Well, Sell by Date was inspired by a look in the mirror and I suddenly thought, oh my goodness, have I reached my Sell by Date? <laughs> you know, being 77 and um, not that I, I care because I still feel I've got all the energy in the world. Mm -hmm. A little bit slower because of my knee surgery. Mm -hmm. um, but I just thought uh, it, I must get back onto a stage. And really, after COVID, you know, everybody said the new normal will be back. Nothing is new. Nothing is normal. I think we all have to find a new alphabet and really pencil everything in because you never know what happens tomorrow. Don't have too many inked in plans for the next 10 months. But so, uh, so I'm working on that. And of course, the election next year is very important in my life mm. because I want to have a lot of energy and, uh, and do some voter education at the same time. Ace, either as himself or his flamboyant alter ego, has been very vocal in his activist capacity, often using satire to address pressing social and political issues. And, you know, with, um, you know, the, the politics, you are a satirist, satirist rather, um, and you get a lot of your, um, your content from the current political climate. What has the current political climate inspired in you and in, the, in your new show, Sell by Date? The thing that's inspired me the most is the fear that our democracy has also reached its sell by date in the hands of a corrupt group. Very careful to say that. It's not a corrupt party. It's a corrupt group of very clever people who know exactly how to, um, to uh, do the things that we don't like happening. I mean, state capture is a very broad, broad accusation, but it's very serious because it's still with us. And yet, after those two months of lockdown, I think we have learned some very interesting lessons which we mustn't lose because suddenly neighbors weren't just neighbors. There were people with names and people with fear. There were people who were hungry, hungry, children who couldn't go to school. 
So one got involved with the community, and I'm very proud of my community in Darling. I'm very proud to be part of my community. And I really hope that community can become the jewel in the crown of democracy. You know, let service delivery start right there at the bottom. And then one day the cabinet minister might get his new second-hand car. And, you know, with COVID happening um, in 2020 and since then, as you said, nothing is new and nothing is normal. Um, a lot of exhaustion and apathy has come out of COVID. People are tired and people just don't feel like putting in the effort into um, creating the change that they so badly want to see. Um, how do you, um, what kind of comments do you have about that and how do you think that um, your um, contribution to theatre is helping that apathy? I'm very careful about talking about contributions and changing people's minds. My job is to entertain. My job is to say, come to me, set your burglar alarm, feed your Rottweiler, make sure that your batteries are running so that your blue light keeps flashing, mm -hmm. and you risk your life in the Johannesburg traffic, and you come to the theater, and you park your car, and you kiss your car goodbye, and then you come into the theater, and I want you to have an experience that will change your life. Because it, it's, it's, humor is so personal, and, and also the celebration of South Africa. When people say, when I say to my audience, let's remember where we come from so we can celebrate where we are going. Some people have said to me, we're not celebrating, it's, it's a mess. I said, hey, it's called democracy. It's never perfect. Everybody's fingerprints are on the silver chalice of freedom. Mm. Everything that's going wrong in South Africa can be fixed. And so a very important point is, there's an election next year. Keep your ID book handy. Make your decision, mm. because there are also good politicians in South Africa. And let's get on and sort the damn thing out. Mm. So your job, or what you set out to do, is to find the humor and the, the, the funny in politics, in South African politics. Why do you think South African politics is funny? You know, I don't think it's funny. Mm. It's absurd. It's irritating, um, and in many ways it is crime-filled. And of course, the democracy has given us some wonderful hedges to hide behind. The Constitution allows somebody to be in court and say, I'm innocent until proved guilty. Mm. And we know exactly that that's a lie. Mm. So I hope people start saying, well, maybe we should change it for politicians, that they are guilty before proving innocent. Mm. Because it's easy to prove innocence. Mm. Um, also, I really think people, I think the people of South Africa are, are wonderful. I think the people are tremendously focused on the future of their children, mm. and they should be given the, the chance to make dreams come true. And mm. what we're going through with load shedding is just so negative and so hurtful, and people are very angry, and young people are very angry. Young kids at school are talking about going to another country which I find awful. And I say to them, no, give it a chance. Where, where is your dream? What do you want to do? What do you want to do with your life? And when they say, I want to also do what you do, I say, okay, you start tomorrow. Mm. Write a story about what makes you angry. Mm. And then you realize that it's not entertaining. You also have to have humor mm. to find out how to control that anger. Mm. Find and the solutions issue. in yeah, it as yeah. well. Speaking of young people in the country, um, you know, we had an off-camera chat about Twitter, now called X. There is a, a culture um, that is a bit scary, especially for entertainers, and especially entertainers of, of, of your caliber. Um, you sometimes tackle very controversial topics that are difficult to discuss. Um, however, the kind of culture that we have now is that soundbite or clip um, culture that takes um, clips out of context and ends up trying to cancel a person. Are you afraid of that? How, what are your views of young people and the way that they interact with technology and social media and how that might impact your work? It's a very serious question because it's a very serious issue. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a great fan of the social media because it's incredibly vicious. It has not been thought through. It's easy, easy answers to questions that you didn't see. Yeah. I'm crazy about the cats and the dogs. Yeah. I love all that. <laughs> and the good news, when there's something celebrating, that's fine. Um, yes, you're right. It can be taken out of context and it can crucify you. I'm very careful. I don't want to... I do want to offend everybody because offending means I've rattled their political cage. But I don't want to demean people. I don't want to insult people. 
Um, and so, yes, it is a, it's my job. I've got to make sure that, um, that I allow my audience to listen, to laugh, um, and to think when they go home. And I always encourage people to bring their kids mm. because in the car back home, the kids will have some interesting questions. And we as adults have to have those answers, really. The title of the latest installment of Ace's Brilliance was inspired by those who incessantly ask about his retirement and whether or not he feels he's reached his sell-by date as a performer. You know, it often surprises me how much um, the lack of reference younger people m might have influences the way that they see the world, that we, the same world that we're all living in. Um, how has your approach to um, younger people, because you, you seem to be quite passionate about getting young people involved in, in, in being responsible citizens. Um, how, how have you noticed younger people are different in terms of their anger now versus people from the 80s, um, the anger that was felt in the 80s and the 90s? The anger in the 80s and the 90s was a very inspired anger mm. because you knew there was something better. There was a bright light at the end of the tunnel. We didn't know if we would ever get to that democracy, but it was worth fighting for. Now there is a light at the end of the tunnel and the light belongs to ESCOM. Mm. So people are not greatly inspired to make plans and to get excited about what they want to do because there are too many young people who haven't got the answer to the question, have I got a future in South Africa? Um, I've been working on my, the things I did during the 80s, the reviews I did during the 80s. And I started working during lockdown and I'm working on them now. To put all that material and that experience together, um, and I've got two volumes, two books, one about the black and white years of apartheid, the review sketches and, and backstories and very entertaining realities of surviving. Um, and they're both free on my website mm. for, for the simple reason that I want young people, everybody's got a screen, everybody's got to find it, pdu, pdu at co.za, pdu, pdu .co.za. That's the website. Um, and it's called One Man Shows. Mm. Uh, and people can read and, and, and share. And young people are already sharing them at school, doing the sketches and asking questions about the historical background. And then history has a chance to also come to the party. And in terms of South Africa um, and the, the differences that we've seen in the last you know, 29 years, um, democracy in South Africa is almost 30 years. So um, young adults, some, you've been doing this for longer than some young adults that, that we have in the country mm. living now. Mm. Um, some might say with all the vast changes that South Africa has gone through in the last 29 years, some things haven't really changed. So what is your view on that? What do you think has changed and what hasn't really changed much in, in the country? Democratically elected governments have found democratically accepted ways to destroy democracy. Mm -hmm. It's happening all over the world. It's happening in America. Donald Trump knows exactly what to do there. It's happening in Europe. It's happening in Russia. It's happening in South Africa, mm -hmm. where actually things are so wrong, but can be proved to be protected by a constitution, because there are clever people out there. Mm -hmm. My advice to young people is to stop being a victim because you think you're a victim because of what you saw on the social media. You're not a victim. You are confused and you're frightened. Don't be frightened. Don't be confused. If you want to really write something down, write the story of your anger, what makes you really angry, and then realize that anger doesn't travel. Find the humor in that, which actually gives you courage. And uh, a lot of courage is needed and a lot of support. And I don't want to be a 77 year old toppy <laughs> saying to young people, no, you people must behave yourselves, you know, and you must really learn your lines. No, man, you must just listen. Listening is very important. Mm -hmm. And if I can tell stories that involve young people, uh, and that's happened, um, I, I mean, I've been doing, I did during the early part of the century, uh, shows about HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. and I went to schools. Mm -hmm. And I went to schools because the principals would say to me, how much does it cost? And I said, it costs nothing, it's free. And they said, oh, that's fantastic. What are you going to do? I said, I'm not going to tell you. But I talk about sex mm. and I use words that you never hear in a school hall, but only once. Because that F word is where sex gets 
mixed up. And just telling young people that you are in charge of your life and your mm. dreams. And really, let's talk as people of the same. I'm 65, you are 15. Mm. Let me make you feel 24 and you make me feel 12. And then there's a level play, playing, playing field. And uh, I had some great inspirations. And I've met many of them now when they're middle-aged people with their own families. Fantastic. And they say, we remembered everything you told us and we're still alive. And that's great. That's beautiful. Um, let's touch on... Danny Evita a little bit. <laughs> How do you think, has she changed at all? Has she done a bit of growing over the years? She's been with us for a really long time now. She's been with us since 1978. Yeah. Um, obviously, during the apartheid era, she was very specifically an ambassador, a member of the National Party, mm. quite happily voted for apartheid because, quite frankly, she didn't know what the alternative was. Mm. Um, and then in the new democracy, she discovered that the former terrorists and communists were actually people who also loved South Africa, as she does. She, um, I did, a, I did a, a series in 1994 with Evita called Funny Galore. Mm. And it's on YouTube, so everybody can find these interviews where Evita interviews Nelson Mandela, where Evita interviews uh, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, mm. not on a sofa, I might add, <laughs> um, where Freni Jinwala puts Evita in a sari. Oh, okay. uh, wonderful examples of humor in government. That's the thing I'm missing now. There is no humor in government. Um, and so I think really one wants to not lose hope when one actually is confronted with very hopeless things, but realize that young people need an alphabet and an alphabet of trust and an alphabet of respect. Mm. Um, so I'll keep going. Um, I go visiting schools and they do the shows, they do the sketches, mm. um, and it's great fun. Sell by Date features not only Peter Dirk Ace, but also a cluster of topical characters, male, female, and political. And you, you said that there's no humor anymore in government. What was your favorite political era for you to be able to um, find that humor in government? Well, in 1985, I met Desmond Tutu for the first time. Mm. And the first thing he said to me, he said, Peter, Peter, why am I not in your show? <laughs> and I thought, yes, like, of course. Because in the apartheid days, I didn't do black people in my show because I wasn't a black people. Yeah. But I did Desmond Tutu. And then there was Nelson Mandela. And then, oh, Peter, where is it? Where is it? I suddenly found such a comfort in uh, Winnie Mandela. Sent me a beautiful 1985, beautiful photograph of her in the marvelous outfit, mm. the Cosa outfit. And she'd written on the, on the photograph, Dear Mr. Ace, the day you do me on stage, please look like this. <laughs> so that was wonderful inspiration for the future. And that really took us through the Madiba honeymoon. Mm. But then people started growing up and the sentiment became very sort of like carefully mm. uh, shared. And now I see no humor, in, which is a pity mm. because one loses and loses hope there. But mm. humor's always around the corner. Mm. So uh, that's where the young people come in. Write material, do material, you know, write your own material, write your own sketches, write your own pension. Mm. You don't have to stand into a queue to audition. If you, when you've written characters and your point of view of your disappointments and your, and your interests. So uh, don't be frightened, you know, have a nice glass of gender fluid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and make your dreams come true. And I believe that you and Evita aren't on the best of terms. Um, how, how has your relationship um, evolved over the years and how, how do you see your relationship evolving going further? Well, she started as a character mm. in a show. But she was good to last for three weeks. And I also did it very consciously knowing that it was illegal for men to wear women's clothing. Mm. I could have been arrested and put it to jail. And of course, Evita on stage would say that she thinks it's shocking that this is man Peter Durga is making fun of me. Mm. He wears women's clothing. Uh, I, in fact, wrote a letter to the Minister of Police on her letterhead. Adran, you must do your job. Peter Durga is a communist and a terrorist. He stresses up the women. Uh, 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 lock him up. Mm. And I posted it and thought, ha, ha, ha. And about two weeks later, a letter came back addressed to Peter Dergais, care of Evita Besaidnet. And there the Minister of Police wrote back, Dear Evita, thank you for your lovely letter. Unfortunately, I can't lock up Peter Dergais <laughs> because the jails are full of everyone else. He had a sense of humor. What? That was a shock. So never underestimate your target. They all have charisma. 
They all have a sense of humor. They're very clever people. Mm. Don't let them be too clever and get away with what they're getting away with. And Evita's still around. She's changed a lot since COVID. She couldn't get to the hairdresser mm. for weeks. So her brown hair, she didn't know what to do. And then she thought every brown cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> so she cut the hair short and gray. And now she looks like Helen Mirren. Thank so you. she's in the show at the Monte Cassino as well. Fantastic. And just going forward, what do you hope to see for South Africa as a whole going forward and for South African theatre specifically? Well, I want everybody to really understand that politicians work for us. We do not work for them. That might help the relationship. Uh, as far as theatre is concerned, we are still trying to dance in front of everybody and say, come and see us. Uh, we've got to cultivate a new audience of young people mm -hmm. because my generation didn't come out at night. If I wasn't performing at night, I wouldn't come out either. Um, and uh, I look forward to all the exciting things that happen with all these things. I mean, AI. Mm -hmm. It used to be IQ. Now it's AI. And I mean, what, every, what you as young people are up against, you've got to know what it's about. Mm. I just say, oh, I don't know. The times I've phoned up the neighbors and they've got a grandson who's 12 and I get him to come because my computer doesn't work. <laughs> and then he looks at me and says, well, Peter, you must switch it on. <laughs> so I'm still switching things on. Lovely. Thank you so much for joining. That was a lovely interview. Thanks. I liked it very much, too. Ace is now back in Johannesburg at Peter Turin's Monte Cassino Theatre until the 10th of September.